I think a lot of us know what we were expecting from this iPhone SE. Let's let's maybe start with that. As far as the naming convention, I'm very happy with that. I'm glad they didn't call it an iPhone SE 2. I'm also glad they didn't call it an iPhone 9. You know, those are just longer names that we didn't have to deal with, not longer for iPhone 9, but a more confusing thing because if we've already had the iPhone 10 and then, you know, the the 10R and then now we're at the 11, naming it an iPhone 9 would have just made no sense. So the the big deal about this phone is the most affordable iPhone feature is A13 Bionic, which again is the latest and greatest chip that you can find in the iPhone 11 and the iPhone 11 Pro. The fastest chip in a smartphone and the best single camera system in an iPhone. For people who don't know how this 2020 iPhone SE, you know, if, if you're not familiar with it, this is a rehash of the iPhone 8. This is an upgrade from an iPhone 8 there's no face ID, just touch ID, a fingerprint reader with a home button like you're used to from the older iPhones. And it's pretty much the same exterior with improved guts. By guts, I'm talking about the chipset and the camera. But we don't really know what kind of camera is in here yet, but we'll kind of read and see what's going on with it. I really wish that they shared what specific camera sensor is coming into this iPhone SE, but I guess we won't know until it does come out, until we start doing camera comparisons and all that kind of stuff. So the first iPhone SE was a hit with many customers who loved its unique combination of a small size, high-end performance, and affordable price. So these are the main things that's going for this iPhone, for this 2020 iPhone SE. You're gonna have great performance, you're gonna have a solid price, we're not so sure on the camera yet, but I think it's going to be a pretty solid product overall. I think it's going to be a big seller. I think there are a lot of people who also never upgraded to the iPhone 10 because they didn't want face unlock. They wanted to keep their home button. They wanted to keep touch ID. And for a lot of people who have the iPhone 8 or the iPhone SE, this is definitely an upgrade for them. I think there are people who still have the iPhone SE who probably aren't happy with this because they don't want the 4.7 inch screen. They wanted an upgrade of another four inch screen. You hold on to the iPhone SE, the original iPhone SE for as long as you can and hope that Apple makes another screen that's gonna be less than 4.7 inches, but I don't see that coming anytime soon. I think we're at the point where screens are going to be at least, I mean, I think is 4.7 inch one of the smallest screens out there today? I believe so. Including our best ever single camera system for great photos and videos. I hate when they say stuff like that, best ever single camera system. Yeah, we know it's going to be your best one for this specific single camera, but it's not going to be the best, right? It's not, it's not going to be iPhone 11 quality maybe it might be for daytime but as far as i've read there's no night mode in here so if you were expecting night mode i'm sorry it's not coming in i'm disappointed too i the way i felt about it is if this phone came with the iphone 11 main shooter which it might but then they removed night mode on it i think that's a disappointment because that would have solidly put the iPhone SE as the best phone under $400. If you saw the title of my video, I said, is it the best phone under 400? Depends. And I think that depends on the camera, at least for me. Kiffer says it, it really is interesting. I really wanted to buy if the camera is going to be the same and if the battery is going to be good enough. It really sounds a bang. It really sounds like a bang for the buck. Yeah, I don't care about the size. So I, I feel the same way. Um, I think the one thing I've been pointing out in all of my videos for the iPhone SE is if it has this A13 Bionic chip, which it now does, it's going to be a top performer. No doubt, going to be top performer. If it had the iPhone 11 shooter, then it was going to be best bang for your buck, right? At $400, $400. Just those two things alone would make it the best bang for your buck. But from what I'm reading, even if it does have the iPhone 11 shooter, which would be great for day shots, if it does not include night mode in it for whatever reason, because they want to either 
handicap it, right? They they want to cripple it from <laughs> handicap. Uh, anyway, if they if they want to if they if they want to if they want to limit its camera performance because they're afraid it's going to eat into the iPhone 11 sales, that that's a shame. That's a disappointment because again, I want a company to show what you could do for this kind of price point. I want to see how how good a phone can get at that price point and just like obliterate the competition. That's what OnePlus used to do. And um, now OnePlus is just part of this other big, you know, buy our really expensive ass phone company. And uh, now there's no other company out there that is, you know, really being that competition. That's what the Nexus line was for when that first came out. And it looks like some of these companies are seeing that they're reading in between the lines. And so they're offering these high end, really expensive phones and then trying to settle at a, you know, kind of a mid range price point and then stuffing what they can into it. I just want a company to wake up and say, no, let's build a $400, $500 phone and let's put the best shit in it and let's make it completely beat the competition because every news article is going to talk about it. Every reviewer is going to talk about it. Everybody's going to say how great it is. And then we're going to be that company. But nobody's doing that right now. Everybody wants to do the, hey, let's make four, five, eight different models of a phone, price it $100 different price steps in between everybody, and let's have everybody compromise. And that's what I hate. I wish it wasn't like that, but that, that's that's what we're going through right now. Let me start over. If Apple put the iPhone 11 camera in the iPhone SE for 2020 with the A13 Bionic chip, we wouldn't have this conversation. That would have been the best phone for 400 bucks. But now that we know it's not going to have night mode on it, it brings into question whether or not that's the best phone for, for, for 400 bucks because now the priority shifts. So the priority for Apple there is its performance. It's giving you top-notch performance with a really good camera. I'm not saying that the camera is going to be bad because I'm sure it's going to be great still during the day, during really good lighting, but you're not going to get night mode. On the other hand, the Pixel 4a is going to have the better camera overall night mode obviously or night side is going to you know beat this iPhone SE hands down but it's going to have a a 700 series chipset i think so it's not going to have the best chipset it's not going to be the best performer <laughs> and here i go again this is where you guys are sitting here having this conversation about well what's your priority What's the better deal for you? What would you rather have? Would you rather have a better performing phone with a really good camera? Or would you rather have a better camera with okay performance? And I hate to say this, but I still think even without night mode on this iPhone SE, I think, I think the iPhone SE still takes the edge over the Pixel 4a. I think so. You know, we can talk about design. Sure, the Pixel 4a is going to have a better design, easily, easily better design. The fingerprint reader, you know, those are probably going to be equal in terms of each other, right? Um, build quality, build quality is going to go to the iPhone uh, SE, despite the display, despite the bezels. Um, the Pixel 4a might have a better battery. But I think what it comes down to for a lot of people is performance and camera and price. So price equals out. Performance, iPhone, camera, Pixel 4, but I don't think it's gonna be, I don't think it's gonna be by a lot. And and that's the upsetting part. I don't think it's gonna be that much where people are gonna say, no, I'm gonna switch over because the Pixel 4a is gonna have the better camera. Um, I don't know. I I don't know. I I'm I'm I I'm waiting for this iPhone SE to come out because like I I, I want to buy it just to test out its camera at night and see how well it works at night. Let's take the two side by side. First, you've got the iPhone SE, a 4.7 inch display, a single 12 megapixel rear camera, uh, iPhone 8-ish battery life, so totally fine. 64 gigs of storage, the powerful A13 Bionic processor, gigabit LTE with dual SIM via eSIM, touch ID, no headphone jack, IP67 water resistance, 18 watt fast wire charging and wireless charging. 
Based on what we know about the Pixel 4a, it will feature a 5.8 inch screen. So that's where the Pixel 4a has an advantage, has a more modern display. You know, it's going to be a lot less bezel. So design wise, aesthetic wise, it's going to look great. A single 12 megapixel rear camera, 3080 milliamp hour battery, 64 gigs of storage, a Snapdragon 730 gigabit LTE, no word on eSIM, a rear mounted capacitive fingerprint scanner, a headphone jack, probably 15 or 18 watt wired charging, but no sign of support for wireless charging or any water resistance rating. I totally forgot about that. And actually that's that's a that's a great point. I'm sorry, I meant to switch the screens, but whatever. That's a great point that David's making here because I forgot that the Pixel 3a doesn't have wireless charging. The Pixel 4a might not have it either. Is wireless charging a deal breaker? It's not for me, but it might be for some. Some people might have been waiting for, you know, a, a wireless charging phone if they had the iPhone SE. And now this is the time for them to get it because they're going to get a small factor phone and um, they're going to get wireless charging. They're going to get water resistance. Um, and they're going to get the newest chipset with an upgraded camera. So on paper, <laughs> here we go. Sorry, let me switch this back. On paper, I'm sorry to say it, but Apple's won the day here on raw hardware, even given the few remaining unknowns about the 4A. So that's kind of how I feel about it. I feel like this is still the better buy. Am I disappointed there's no night mode for the iPhone SE? Yeah. And now I've said it, I don't know how many times I've said it in the stream. I'm disappointed it's not in there. It's a shame it's not in there. But I, th I still think the camera is going to be, it's going to be really comparable to the Pixel 4a, I think. I think. I could be wrong. I want to be wrong. I want to I wanna test it out at night and say, um, yeah, the Pixel 4a blows the, the iPhone SE out of the water in terms of night shots or low light. So don't buy a iPhone SE if the camera is your number one priority. But again, now you're going to suffer in terms of performance. And you might not for most people, there might be a lot of people who might not worry about the performance. They're not, you know, heavy handed on their phones. They're not switching apps all day because really that's really as far as performance goes on my phone is I switch through apps pretty frequently. And if there's lag there, then yeah, it's going to bother the shit out of me and I'll make it known. But my Pixel 4 has been solid. My iPhone 11 Pro has been solid and I have no issues with it. So uh, I think it's unlikely Google will bring wireless charging to its budget phone, though not impossible. And I think it's really unlikely that it'll get an IP rating for submersion like the new SE has. I could be wrong, of course, but given what we saw with the Pixel 3a, it seems terribly hard to imagine Google will be cutting into its margins deeper with its new budget phone by adding costly new features. Everything we know about the 4a suggests that it will be a modest update to a modest phone, and that just doesn't feel like enough to go up against Apple's new budget iPhone.